a system that was a failed add-on, and one of Sega's biggest flops. But did you know it had some incredibly good games? I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I count down my top 10 Sega CD games. Second Opinion Games Number 10, Cyborg Number 9, or 009. I don't really know what to call it because this was a Japanese exclusive, which means all of the beautifully hand-drawn cutscenes here, which are done like a Saturday morning cartoon, are all in Japanese, which makes me wonder what the heck is going on. And I wonder that extra hard after actually playing the game and seeing all the bosses, and notice that the cartoon segments don't really line up all that well with what action you perform on the game. How is the game played itself? Well, it's a 2D action platformer game, sort of like Contra, with just a run and gun where you try to dodge obstacles and enemies alike. But you can't fire at a diagonal, of course, so that means you're always firing straight forward. This might be boring if it wasn't for the insanely good music and the great effect sounds as everything blows up all around you. What's also nice is the addition of a quick dash, which is really cool for taking on massive boss battles and learning how to use the dash is really the whole premise of the entire experience. If you love a good run and gun, look nowhere else but the Sega CD because they also have Terminator, but I'd rather be playing Cyborg number nine. Number 9, WWF Rage in the Cage. That's right, the World Wildlife Fund brought us one terrific wrestling game. And this one isn't exclusive to the Sega CD. Now, it doesn't look that impressive. It could probably have been made for the regular Sega Genesis, and everyone would have loved it there. Also, I got to note that fighting games and wrestling games alike are best played with a friend. So if you have a friend, you are going to have a great time with this. There are plenty of characters to choose from and one of my favorites is here the macho man randy savage Ooh, yeah but there is no hulk hogan whatsoever but i'm completely okay with that because i am all about the macho man and that leads me to the best part of this game no it's not the cage matches it's the fact that they announce your people before they start the match and it's like done professionally like it was stripped right from a tv broadcast and then they have sound clips of your favorite wrestlers of the time saying a little quote and of course the macho man has his and i absolutely love it this plays like a regular wrestling game at the time and i'm completely okay with that so you have to grab this one and a friend and get ready for a terrific time Number eight, FMV games. That's right, I'm gonna lump them all together in one category. Let's pay a little closer attention to Time Gal because the animation is unbelievably good here. And I really like this chick with green hair. She was also in Cash Full of Shimigami 3 and it was the character I like to play as the most. Also, there's Road Avenger, so you have a car driving around and just trying to hit the buttons in time is darn thrilling, even if it is just a controlled cutscene with quick QTEs just all over the place. That's the entire game. But of course, you could also find games like Wirehead, which I did a complete speed run with no commentary on YouTube that you can find. And I also did a full review of Prize Fighter, which is a very underrated boxing game. And I kind of tell you how to play through and beat the entire game. So I got to say, give some FMV some love because not all of them are crap like you're led to believe if you never played them way back in the day. But I understand that they're not for everybody because some of these take superhuman reflexes. That's why we have our next game. Number seven, Panic. It's a button pressing simulator. That is the entire game. It's also more of a Saturday morning cartoon than anything. Basically, it's a kid, he gets sucked into your game console being the Sega CD, he's stuck in a almost FMV. But this time, it's just slow down the pressing buttons at your own leisure. Every time you press a button, something funny might happen. So the whole point of the game is to just sit back and enjoy your environment. Also, changing the environment. So you want to hit the right button that makes the scenery change. There's not a whole lot else going on here other than that. Of course, there are some booby trap buttons. There's about 30 of them in all 
and I don't understand if you want to press all of them or press none of them. And it's also sort of like memorization, because sometimes you could go backwards to a previous level, so you have to remember which button to hit to move forward once more again. So it's not really a video game so much as just an interactive drinking experience that you are definitely going to want to do with a friend. Also, chicks really dig this game, and also little kids. If you have a good sense of humor, well, then legit play this game. Number six, The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Now, this whole thing is a racing game, and it is one of the most frustratingly difficult racing games of its time. Even though most of the time you're on a straight track road, just trying to avoid the traffic and not hurt civilians is nearly impossible. And also, the boss battles are really tough, too. In later stages, you could be flying the Batwing or in the Bat Boat doing some things. But the best part about this entire game isn't the insane difficulty. No, that's the most frustrating part. It is the animated cutscenes in between the level, which you could probably splice together to make a lost episode of the animated Batman series, all voiced by the original voice actors, and it actually looks quite watchable. And it's quite brutal in its graphic little violence with just blood well, tree blood spraying everywhere. It's definitely a must watch. I'm sure you could find it somewhere on YouTube with it all cut together to make the show itself, but the enjoyment is the reward for beating these really difficult levels. And that is something that I find amazing to this day. Number five, Mickey Mania, the timeless adventures of Mickey Mouse. Yes, it's also on the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, and both of those versions are just all right in my book. But the Sega CD truly steals the show. There are extra frames of animations, but what it really excels at is the terrific music that is just done with the hardware of the Sega CD. It's a beautiful Red Book audio is something that I could just listen to in my car for a drive, but also what stands out to me is the voice sampling clips. It just brings Mickey Mouse to life and makes the whole game feel more alive and more complete. They could completely re-release this game right now on the Nintendo Switch, and I would be the first one to buy a physical copy of it. Even if it is painfully difficult at spots, it is still one of the best action platforms Performers ever made. I put this up there with like Super Mario Brothers 2 at the very least. It's a beautiful game and it sounds like one of the best ever created. Number four, Shining Force CD. Now I get knocked on quite a bit for not playing too many RPGs. And that's because I tend to get sucked into them really fast and then my entire life crumbles around me. Well, you better believe Shining Force CD is gonna be one of those games that does exactly that. I absolutely love the Advanced Wars series and the Fire Emblem games. I put this actually above almost all of the Fire Emblem games because when my main characters die and they will die they come back to life but that doesn't mean the game is easy it's actually quite darn difficult so you actually have to use some of them as fodder to surround the characters that you want to keep alive but also the ones that you want to keep alive deal the most damage so they're also the ones that you're going to want to put out on your front line to destroy your enemies as they come at you and you find yourself in one of the best cat and mouse games of all time times as you just try to destroy and crush your way through this whole experience. It's also like two games built into one that was originally for the Sega Game Gear, but I much rather be playing on the Sega CD because the increased audio and they cleaned up the graphics quite a bit. This is a beautiful game that will probably have your wife leaving you and taking the kids, but that's okay because now I am freed up to play more Shining Force CD. Number three, Android Assault. This is just another run-of-the-mill shooter. At least that's what I thought when I got it. It goes for a ridiculous sum of money, like a lot of Sega CD games. And being that it's a shooter, it won't really change the way the game's played all that much. Unlike some other games that might entirely be in Japanese if you do so. So don't do that with Shining Force CD. 
Instead, save some money and pick this one up. What's its gimmick? Well, the fact that there's tons of different power-ups, but that's really not so much a gimmick anymore in shooters. How about the fact that you could power up multiple times and then turn into a mech, but that increases your hitbox size? Okay, well, maybe that's really not that interesting to you either. Well, how about the fact that if you stop shooting for a little bit, you could charge up a super powerful shot that is interesting depending on which weapon you have. So you're going to want to learn the weapons inside and out because taking on some of the bosses with the wrong weapon might be really painful to you. It also does that thing that... If you die, you have to try and repower yourself up to a good portion in order to beat the boss. So when you get hit too many times, you might just want to start all over fresh. Also, there's multiple levels of difficulty here, so make sure you start the game off on easy, learn all of the tricks of the trade, and then crank the difficulty up to get the most enjoyment out of one of the best shooters ever made. Trust me, it's worth the money. Just not like the $600 for an American version. Number two, Final Fight CD. This is my favorite version of Final Fight. If you don't know what it is, it's just a side-scrolling beat-em-up where you can play as two lame dudes or Mike Hagar, the mayor of the most vicious town ever because they kidnapped his daughter. Now he's going to suplex and beat up every single citizen he sees in order to get her back. He doesn't care if they voted for him or not. And he's even going to enter the wrestling ring because apparently he used to be a pro wrestler. And also he is seriously ripped. He spends a lot of time in the gym. You could also hit both action buttons together to do a spin thing. Each of the main characters here has their own spinning thing, but why do I like this more than the arcade? Well, the music uh, to me sounds a bit better, and everyone dies a little bit quicker, so you can just plow through the game really darn fast. And there's also continues. Also, the fact that I don't have to keep pumping quarters into it is definitely a plus. Now, you could say it's a little bit darker than the arcade experience, but to me, it's just a reminder of how the old arcade games tended to lose a lot of clarity over time in the TV screens that were put in, so it feels kind of washed out like playing an old arcade machine. This was the very first time I actually felt like the arcade popped into my living room, and I love Final Fight CD to this day for it. Number one, Pop Full Mail. It's an action RPG that you don't have to level grind. Now you do have to grind a little bit to collect some money to upgrade your weapons because that's everything in the game. Also, there are three different characters you could play as. There's a wizard and there's a dragon later on in the game, and each one has their own different dialogue boxes. And also, every single character in the game has been voiced perfectly. So if you could barely read like I can, I know that's a shocker to you people that say, hey, this script is terrible and this person sounds like an idiot. Well, it's because I kind of am, which means I love this game for reading it to me, which means I could actually follow the plot. As you progress through the game, you'll even run into some really cool characters like Spend the Uncommon. You pretty much just have to look it up on YouTube if you want to see it. It's terrific in every single way. And this goes down as my favorite working designs game ever made, which means it's going to cost a lot of money. Don't buy Bother with the Japanese version, spend the extra cash and get the American one because it's also a collector's item that's going to keep going up in value, assuming Bit Decay doesn't get it and kill your disc. But this is definitely the very best Sega CD game, and I would also say it's the best game that you could play on your Sega Genesis in general. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Ooh, yeah! Because the Macho Man's gonna be rocking and reeling and dancing on the ceiling. I'm gonna do a tap dance on your head. Ooh, yeah! Let's get down! Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. I've been wanting to make this video for a while because the Sega CD is one of my go-to consoles when I just want to sit down and have a great time. 
It's a shame that a lot of people just think it's garbage because of games like Night Trap, but it really is a terrific system. It doesn't have as many games as the Genesis, but the ones it does have, it tends to be really good. However, there is a few stinkers in there that you might find just to make people think this was a garbage piece of equipment. So what is your favorite Sega CD game? Please let me know in the comments down below because I'm probably going to use it in a future video for your favorite games. So until later, I'll see you again, guys.